So today, what we are going to be doing, I have prepared a Google form. Anyone can submit a suggestion and then we'll do like a random number generator to pick your guys' suggestions that we're gonna do today in Universe Sandbox. Random number generator. So um, the number nine, <laughs> replace the largest planet and replace it as the sun, make it hot and the sun and see if Earth survives. Wait, let me, I gotta, I gotta read this one better. So we're replacing Jupiter with the sun is going to be our first one. So we can just go in here and then actually there's a replace object button that we can use and replace it with the sun. So now there are two suns and one is where Jupiter was. I wonder how this is going to affect the orbits of everything. Sun's right here. This is the new sun. And then he, this is obviously the center. It's kind of in orbit, but you can see it's like pulling all of these asteroids towards it. So like it's totally ripping the sun towards it. So I assume they're going to start kind of orbiting each other and form like a binary system. But look at all the planets. They are not having fun over here. Earth, I think Earth just got slingshotted out. Oh, it's in a very, very elliptical orbit. Let's focus on Earth. Um, not looking good for Earth. It's 300 degrees Celsius on here. What's our life likelihood? 0.4. Hey, we could still be alive. 0.3, 0.2, 0.1. Uh, okay. Oh, and look, there's light coming from two sides. You can see that because there's two different suns, which is kind of crazy. So let's see what happens here. I want to see if it stabilizes over time or if it's going to be this weird orbit forever. The life likelihood's going up. Oh, it's like at 0.5 now. So, I mean, I would still be alive, obviously. I don't know about you guys, though. Okay, I think it's kind of stabilizing itself. If we do orbits, maybe? No, that, that makes it worse. Trails is better. I'm going to speed up time as fast as I can make it. Yeah, they're kind of like stabilized in this like weird looping pattern. Let's see what happens to the rest of the system. So it looks like Neptune. Oh, Earth is all the way out here. Earth is completely dead. I thought it was in orbit at least a little bit. Yeah, Earth's completely dead, but it does look like the two suns are kind of in a weird binary orbit now with each other because that pattern's just repeating. And Saturn looks like the only planet that is still with the stars. Oh, and Mercury, look, 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 Mercury staying around the sun because it was so close to it. So that is what would happen if Jupiter was replaced with the sun. It would completely destroy the solar system. And then we have a kind of a new binary system here. Mercury and Saturn are the only planets to survive. And a few dwarf planets, maybe? Make Make? Looks like it's in orbit. All right, let's go to the next suggestion. Let's see, let's do another random number generator. 14, which is make a black hole right next to the Earth to get very realistic spaghetti Earth. I don't know if it's going to spaghettify Earth, but we're going to put a black hole right next to Earth. How big of a black hole should we do? Because we could do like a really small black hole or like like a black hole. One solar mass isn't very big. You can see that's very small, but it's super dense. So this black hole here, look how small compared to Earth. This has the same mass as the sun. So it'll kind of have a similar effect to what it would be if we put the sun right next to Earth. It's just going to immediately destroy it. Okay, look, immediately it killed all of the life and like just, oh, okay, look, it's starting to rip apart the internals of it. That is crazy. Before it even pulls the Earth, the whole Earth is being ripped apart. Look at that. Whoa, okay, that's actually crazy. And you can see it's pulling the gases and it just devoured Earth and everything around it. <laughs> so that's what would happen if a one solar mass black hole was next to Earth. Pretty much immediately, that was only three seconds a second. So in like 30 seconds, the entire Earth would be destroyed. So now we're going to do a really small black hole. So let's try one moon mass. So the black hole now is less mass than Earth. And, and you can see already there's a big difference. It's not immediately destroying Earth. It is moving very quick though. They're gonna be pulling towards each other. I still would expect a little bit of stuff to get ripped off of Earth, but maybe not. Okay, this black hole is the same mass as the moon. It says one solar mass, but it's actually the moon. Um, let's see. Doesn't look like that much is happening yet. Oh, what? It turned it into a gas giant? How does that happen? Immediately it turned into a gas giant. Is it actually, or does it just have a lot of gas on it? It still says planet. You can see the amount of impact that had, even though it was such a small object in terms of like, the radius of it. I think that might be more damaging to Earth than actually just throwing the moon at it. Let's see what Earth looks like after all this. It somehow turned into a gas giant. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Where did the gas come from? Is there a chance of life at least? No. 
So <laughs> it just killed all of Earth. How do I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Okay, wait. I want to see what's going to happen if I just throw the moon at Earth. Because the mass will be the same. But I want to see if a similar thing happens. Because usually when I like throw the moon at Earth, it doesn't turn into a gas giant. I don't know why a black hole made it turn into a gas giant. That's so weird. Okay, here comes the moon towards Earth. We'll see what happens with this. Okay, slow down. No way it turns into a gas giant. Okay, there's the collision. Lots of fragments, and it does, like, heat up the gas, so it kind of makes the atmosphere non-see-through. I really don't know why it turned into a gas giant. This kind of looks like a gas giant, but I think it's just the really hot gas. I think is if we if we give it time, I'm pretty sure this will cool back down after a few years. Yeah, 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 look. So Earth is better off to get hit by the moon than get hit by a tiny little black hole that is the same mass as the moon. Interesting. I would not have expected that. Random number... Seven is make a solar system with 10 planets. Let's put a star to start. Let's just do random, I don't know, random known. Let's see what we get. HD 164509. This one's slightly bigger than the sun, but it should work. What's our luminosity at? 1.6. So it's decently brighter than our sun, about 60% brighter. Binary habitable system. We should, that'd be cool to do binary habitable planets. Let's go for that. That'd be cool. It's going to depend on what planet we use. Let's do this one. Okay, so the, we could do two like mega terras because this is three times the mass of Earth and 1.4 times the rate. So it's 40% bigger than Earth and three times the mass. So the gravity is going to be really high on this planet. Um, just pressure and composition. So that'll switch all of the elements in the atmosphere to match Earth and the pressure of Earth. Okay, so now this has a good atmosphere. Let's put some water on it. I still think the best way to do this right now is to go material and shoot water onto it. And then you can um, settle the liquid. Oh, we put too much. I don't want it completely covered. We want a little bit of land. Okay, that looks good. Uh, we'll go with that. And it's got like little round islands where we can have life develop. Now let's put some vegetation on it. You can make it look better than the games like that because then it looks more natural with kind of like brownish in it. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. There's our first planet. I tried to put a North Pole, but I did not put it in the North. So now it's just got this random ice spot right here. And the South Pole's not really lined up either. So just ignore that. What's our life likelihood? 62.2, that's pretty good. We will take that. Okay, let's give it a binary planet like this. Should be good. No way we just spawn a habitable planet. What's our life likelihood? 28. That's pretty high already. I'm probably just going to leave it. So those are definitely binary with each other. Like, it looks like this one's orbiting this one. But if we go on this one, it'll look like... Or maybe it is orbiting. What does it say? Oh, it says moon. Okay, wait. Let's give it a little bit more mass. So it'll say planet instead. Binary. There we go. Binary. So now they are orbiting each other, which is exactly what we want. You can see whichever one you focus on, the other one looks like it's orbiting. Those are getting dangerously close. I think it's fine. It's probably fine. Now, we should do like a, a Venus type planet. What are we naming the planet? Burnt chicken. That's kind of that's kind of good. Okay, we gotta pick up the pace. This is this suggestion is taking forever. All right, there is our system. That suggested took a while, but we made a little system here. Now let's go to the next one. Replace the sun with a black hole and see what happens to the solar system. We can do that. So if we replace the sun with a black hole that is one solar mass, it's actually not going to change anything besides temperature. This black hole is the same mass as the sun, and it doesn't change the orbits at all because the mass is exactly the same. So it would have no effect besides, obviously, there's no more sun, so like Earth would probably freeze. But what's crazy is look how small this black hole is like compared to the sun. So these have the same exact mass, but look at the size difference. This is the black hole, and then you have to zoom out so far to see the sun. You should speed run. Okay, guys, now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna turn up the mass and see what happens. It starts pulling the planets in. Oh, they're kind of spiraling now. So like this is if the black hole just started growing. So now they just have a ton of elliptical orbits because it's just pulling them in, but it's actually really hard to pull hard enough to suck them all the way in because they're in orbit. Uh, it looks like it's starting to shred something. Oh, is that Jupiter? Oh, bruh, look what it's doing to Jupiter. The tidal forces inside of Jupiter, I think, it's like shredding it. This black hole is now 250 solar masses. I'm going to keep going. You can see everything getting shredded apart. 
kind of creating like an accretion disc type thing. It's pulling out the outer objects now. It is now 1.3 million times the mass of the sun, <laughs> bruh. Let's get, pick another suggestion. All right, number four, black hole moon or a binary planet and black hole. Okay, so we're gonna try to give Earth a black hole moon. So if we just crush it down without changing the mass, it should stay in orbit just how it is. So if we lock the mass, turn the radius down. So we're just crushing it right now. We're not changing how much moon there is. We're just like pressing it down into itself. Crush, smaller and smaller. It is only 0.1 kilometers and it's still not a black hole. One meter and it's still not. That's gotta be like the densest thing ever. Three millimeters and it's not? How small do you have to be? It's 0.6 millimeters. The moon is now like literally this big. 0 0.092. I think nothing's really gonna happen because it's the same mass. So it should just stay in orbit. Yeah, it's just in orbit. Let's start turning the mass up. Let's see when it starts to affect Earth. Okay, it is now 0.7 times the mass of Earth. You can see that really affected the orbits. They're kind of binary now. Oh, oh, okay. Let's see what happens if I make it five times the mass of Earth. Let's see what happens when they fly by right now. I bet it's gonna rip it apart as it comes up right here. 10 times Earth. So this little moon black hole. Oh, oh, wait, oh my gosh, it just shredded Earth. I did not, I wasn't ready. It, yeah, just completely shredded Earth into a bunch of rocks. That's crazy. 37. Throw Earth into the name of an object. I'm going to search it. If they don't have it, well, we'll do a different suggestion. Oh, here it is. They do have it. Here is the planet. I've never heard of this planet before. Does anyone know anything about it? It's 1.7 Jupiter, so it's a pretty big planet. Here we go. Launch into it. Here we go. Earth going in. Um, makes the whole thing light up on fire. There we go. I don't know what this planet is, but we threw Earth into it. Yay! Chip, use a laser and make it the size of Pluto, then use it to destroy Pluto and then blow it up. We can definitely, definitely do that one. What's the radius of Pluto? 0.1 Earth. So if we change the radius on this to 0.17, so it should. Yeah, look. Oh. <laughs> That's not even that strong of a laser. It's just so thick. Oh, that was enough to destroy it? What? Pluto's so weak. Okay, collide everything in the solar system is going to be our next one. They'll all just end up becoming the sun. So we should almost do everything but the sun. So here's Mercury, and then we'll throw Venus into it. We'll just like put them like this. Venus, and then mix it with Earth, and then Mars, and then Jupiter is definitely going to be the biggest contender here, absorbing everything, <laughs> and then Saturn. There goes Saturn, and then Uranus. Neptune, and then we'll throw in a lot of the other stuff. It's just gonna all turn into Jupiter, but it really is a combined planet. So this is everything in the solar system combined besides the sun and compared to Jupiter. That's how big Jupiter is. Jupiter is like the majority of the solar system, unless you count the sun, which obviously the sun is going to be still way bigger than everything else. And they will all get <laughs> combine into the sun everything in the solar system combined into one body now okay the next suggestion we're gonna do is delete the sun and see how long earth could still sustain life delete the sun and then we will be going to earth and we're gonna watch its life likelihood stat right here once this says zero everything is dead it's still good for a few hours why is it going up huh how is the life likelihood going up i deleted the sun it's still going up. Okay, it's dropping now, but it went up like 3%. That's crazy. How did it go up? Okay, now everything's starting to freeze. I guess it's because global warming, guys. So it was cooling down and making Earth better. Okay, it's been... Wait. Oh, it's been a year? The life likelihood was going up for a whole year with no sun. That's crazy. Now let's see what happens. It's now slowly dropping. But after a year and a half, we're still in the 90s. After two years, 91. Okay, we're gonna speed up time a little bit. So in the year 2050, it's still at 60%, which is kind of crazy. How is life surviving for this long with no sun? Okay, we're at 1% in the year 2231. So I guess if the sun got deleted, we could still live the rest of our lives, maybe? Okay, it just hit zero in the year 2319. So it took 300 years for all the life to die. Let's go to our next suggestion. 
Make all of Pluto's moons collide with it. That's a pretty good one. How many moons does it really have? I know it has Sharon, but like it has a couple more minor ones, I think. Pluto, the worst object in the system. What moons show up? Just Sharon? I guess it only has Sharon. We definitely can throw Sharon into Pluto. Here it comes. Sharon and Pluto collision. And go. Why is there no glowing? Why is it it's so cold out here? It's not even glowing from that. It's just colliding. Delete the sun and make every planet as big as the sun. First step, delete the sun. And then we're going to set the mass of each object to one sun. Venus like turned into a star immediately. Earth, uh, one sun. Looks like that now. Once I hit play time, they should all turn into stars because I don't think you can be this big without being a star. All right, so now every single planet has the same mass as the sun. This is going to definitely affect the solar system a lot. Let's see what happens. Oh, immediately right as I hit play, they all turned into stars. And then we'll speed up time and see what happens. So a lot of these asteroids are being heavily affected. Jupiter's getting launched out. So now it's just like a bunch of stars all next to each other. Let's see if there's any like pattern after sufficient amount of time. Oh, it looks like Jupiter and Venus kind of have their own pattern going, but Pluto might come and ruin that. Neptune and Uranus are getting thrown out, it looks like. Oh, Jupiter and Saturn now. I want to see if any of them stay together because it looks like a lot of them are going to just be launched out. Jupiter's definitely gone, but it looks like everything else is kind of bunched together. We got like a five star system now. Oh, there goes Saturn. Let's pick another suggestion. Okay, throw a brown dwarf at Earth to just barely deorbit Earth and see what happens to other planets as you make the star gets larger. What? I think it means throw it next to Earth without hitting Earth to just deorbit Earth. So we're going to do that. So we need like a brown dwarf to fly by it. So I'm going to throw Jupiter, but then just make Jupiter a little bit bigger. But we don't want it to hit Earth. So I'm going to throw it like right here. That's still too close, I think. Like that. And then make it big enough to start burning up. So this is uh, Jupiter. Oh, no. Okay, this isn't going to work. I already know. It just, <laughs> it just completely absorbed Earth. We're going to need the velocity to be going this way. See if that works. Oh, wait. It definitely did affect some things. Look at Earth's orbit super elliptical now. So it's definitely having an effect. It's almost pulling it in. So just adding that, you can see it's definitely affected the inner planets. Let's give it more time and see. Oh, whoa, Earth just got shot out. So that will definitely kill Earth. But if it's anything like what we saw before, Earth will survive another 300 years before it's everyone's dead. So we, I guess we're fine. Make the moon a gas giant and then surround it with five moons and make one of the moons habitable. Here is the moon. Let's just turn up the mass until it kind of becomes a gas giant. It'll probably end up eating Earth. It's a really big rocky planet now. Let's give it some hydrogen. There we go. Why does that not make it a gas giant? There we go. Okay. We now have a gas giant, which is almost four times the mass of Jupiter. So this is a really big gas giant. So let's give it four small moons. One, two, three, four. And then we'll give it a big moon out here. And this will be the habitable one. Um, no way. Is this already habitable? It's got a life likelihood of 11, which on a moon, that's crazy. It's forming ice on the around the poles, which is kind of cool looking, actually. Or is that ice or is it just spinning so fast? It could just be spinning so fast that the I think that's what it is, that the water is being pushed to the equator. So there's our habitable moon now. What's our life likelihood? 10.8. I'm going to put vegetation on it just to see. Yeah, that looks cool. So that is the moon as a gas giant. And then we gave one of the moon's habitable conditions. Make Stevenson 2 and 8 collide with UI Scooty to make the mega stars. Okay, let's get UI Scooty and then Stevenson 2 and 8. So this was the former largest star and then this is the new largest star, which you can see is quite a bit bigger. It's not like just barely bigger. I'm going to put it over here and then we can watch them kind of collide in slow motion. They are definitely moving towards each other because they have insanely high amounts of gravity. It takes months for them to start interacting because of how big they are. Like the scales that we're working with are huge, but they get faster and faster as you get closer. Like the simulation has been running for 24 years now. Okay, here we go. Two of the biggest known stars colliding with each other. Here we go. Here we go. Collision. And they are colliding right now. <laughs> They're like clipping inside of each other. Uh, oh, and there it goes, supernova. Wow, I'm zooming out right now. I can't even zoom out fast enough to see this. 
So it looks like neither of the stars survived and they both just made a giant supernova going out and there are no stars left. There we go. There is two of the biggest stars colliding. And just to show you how big those stars are, here's the solar system. And then I'll put Stevenson 2 and 8 in here and you'll see just how big Stevenson 2 and 8 is. Here is the size of Stevenson 2 and 8 in the solar system. That's how big the stars get. All right. Goodbye, everybody. I will see you all soon. Love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.